About a year ago, we had a look at the Montec Sky 1. Quite the incredible case. Montec was able to deliver a pretty solid case quality with a very, very high airflow mesh performance front panel. And at the same time, they stuffed that thing full of compatibility features such as EADX support, a cable hiding bracket with integrated GPU holder, USB Type-C, all of that good stuff. Now they are back with another iteration featuring a similar design but in a much more affordable price range. Meet the Montec Sky One Lite white cause we have both. And before we begin with the actual review, make sure to stay until the end cause Montec didn't send us two of them cause I'm a pretty boy, no they wanted us to do a giveaway. And because I don't want anybody to get a stroke cause his motherboard color doesn't match the case, you are going to be able to choose the color that you want. Yay, choices! But before we get to the giveaway, let's find out if you really want this case. This is the Sky One Lite. Standing like that, it measures about 415mm in depth, 220mm in width and 490 in height. While it's standing on two quite tall feet which allow more than enough air to get into the power supply. Although it has light in its name, do not believe that it is supposed to be some type of cheaped out version of the original one because it still has a ton to offer. For example the I.O. 2 USB 3.0, 1 USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C, a mic in and out, a power and reset button and an RGB button. Actually, this is exactly the same I.O. as on the original one, it's just located in a better spot. As we've already crossed the subject, RGB. The front of the case is covered in exactly the same ultra fine mesh structure which lets a ton of air in, just like the original one. And from top to bottom we have that thin line of RGB with a glowing Montec logo on the top edge, just like the original one. Inside we will find, again, a SATA power pod to get the ARGB going and a 3 pin ARGB header which allows us to pass through the ARGB controller and just let the motherboard take care of everything. To play with the controller just press the button and switch from mode to mode and press it for 3 seconds to shut everything off or press it for 5 to switch to motherboard mode. Something that was quite of a bummer is that there is no ARGB follow-up port, meaning that we cannot extend the ARGB controller to other fans or to whatever else we wanted to install and uh, use ARGB on it and that would have been quite useful. Now before you think all of the review would just be summarized as just like the original one, it's not. While the original Sky One had 1mm diameter holes in a 1 to 1 cm center to center composition, the new one has 1.5mm big holes and positioned 2.25mm apart from each other center to center. So this means that the front fans will now be capable of pulling in quite a lot more air through the panel and simultaneously they will not be forced to work as hard as they used to do. Meaning that fans like for example the Nokia NFS12A can reach its full potential, while on the original one it might have been blocked or capped off a tiny bit. Though keep in mind that the original one was already really freaking good, just, this is just like the next better iteration. But what made me quite happy is that Montec reused the same no cable pushpin approach to get the ARGB signal to the front panel. Yep, just slam that front panel in and you are good to go. Instead of being light, the side panel even got a bit of an upgrade. This time we got a tempered glass side panel which isn't screwed in, but it's kept in place with a little knob that can be unlocked by pressing one side, revealing something that you can actually pull on, and that then opens the case. From there, open it up at least halfway and pull it up to get it off. Inside we will start to see why the case is called light. Probably the biggest or at least the most noticeable difference to the original Sky One is the missing cable hiding thing. That thing has been replaced with rubberized cable holds which although not at the same level of coolness are still looking quite good and in case you're wondering the white version got them in white. Around the motherboard plate we will also find the other holes though these are coming without any rubber on them but uh, hey this time around we have a super handy hole positioned perfectly for the GPU cable. In terms of hardware support, the Sky One Lite is really battling with the original one. Although we've lost EATX support, leaving us with only ATX, Micro ATX and Mini ITX, we will get 5mm more air cooler support up to 170mm high cooler. For the GPU, we are now looking at up to 350mm long cars, ignoring the potential radiator in the front. When it comes to fans and radiators, we can install up to two 120s or 140s in the top 
a 120 in the back, three 120s or 140s in the front, as well as two additional 120s on top of the PSU shroud. For radiators, the restrictions work quite similarly. 280 or 360 in the front, 280 or 240 in the top and 120 in the back. The PSU is located in its own little compartment in the bottom of the case, which now features a little stamped in Montag tags with removable dust filter. For the length, the minimum we can go for are up to 180mm long power supplies, though this can be ignored if you don't want to use the hard drive brackets in the back. This one is removable by removing the two screws underneath the case and then just unhook the thing and then lift it up. By default we can install up to 4 SSDs or 2 SSDs in combination with two 3.5 inch hard drives inside the Sky One Lite. Two behind the motherboard and another two inside and on top of the hard drive case. For cable management we may not have as many options compared to the original deal but we will have something to work with in form of three cable straps and a bunch of zip tie holes. Additionally there is a surprising amount of space above the motherboard area, meaning that hooking up the CPU cable or mounting in fans is very very easy. Another big difference to the original Sky One are the pre-installed fans. Instead of a random black fan and a random ARGB fan, the Sky One Lite comes with three random black or random white fans depending on the version you went for. Two of them are installed in the front and one in the back. And although I believe this to be an upgrade cause three fans are better than two obviously, the those are still random as fans and they are still using a 3 pin voltage controlled header, something that could definitely get an upgrade. All in all, directly comparing the Sky One regular, which by the way is now being listed as end of life, like after a year of being released, but what the hell. Anyway, directly comparing that one to this one. I cannot really say that the light is a light version. Sure, we lost the beautiful cable hiding plate, the vertical GPU support, a 120mm spot in the top and an ARGB controller that allowed you to connect more devices, but in exchange we got a upgraded side panel, better airflow capable front panel, an extra fan, 5mm more air cooler support and two fans on top of the PSU shroud. So all in all I believe both are kinda equal in their respective value. Plus, the Sky One Lite seems to be about 30 bucks below the original ones. So as far as I'm concerned, you kinda trade that beautiful cable hider for a ton more bang for the buck. Build experience and quality wise, both cases are pretty much equal. In neither case did we have any trouble fitting anything in, everything was very sturdy or at least considering the price point and the only noticeable difference for us was the additional GPU pole here in the bottom made it a lot easier to make those cables look awesome, something that was not present in the original one. The only thing that I did not particularly enjoy is the fact that our white model came with the top panel being slightly damaged in the back right corner and this led to me having a joyful remove it by brute force experience, nothing that should be happening in a consensual PC building activity. But there was also something that I particularly enjoyed, the front button cable. Now you know how these usually look and make you feel and doubt your life choices, but not on here. Here we got some random ass green bracket that keeps all of those devilish creatures tidy, meaning that you can just take the whole damn thing and consensually slam that sucker in there. Amazing feeling, trust me, you, you want that feeling. Although I believe this to be an amazing feeling, why is it green? That stuff can be seen from a mile away. Make it black, just black. Please. Performance wise we will cover this in a dedicated video which was already filmed, this, this exact build. Though keep in mind considering the price point and the type of hardware that you would put into this thing, you will never exceed the amount of air that the front panel can provide. So you are pretty much good to go in, you know, if you don't go for 12900K, 3090i and an Intel stock cooler and wonder why it doesn't work. So for who is the case? I believe this is the perfect option for everything what's mid-tier, a thousand, two thousand bucks. The stuff like 3070 Ti's, 3080's, 12700K's, that kind of build. Especially because the case now costs below a hundred bucks, which was one of the nagging points on the original one because we believed that Montec needed to make the Sky 1 
not exceed the price point of NZXT H510i. I wasn't necessarily talking about creating an all new case, but the result is pretty respectable and if you come in with a let's say 2000 or 1000 dollar build, the case would be between 10 and 5% of your total cost, which I believe is pretty reasonable nowadays. The only thing that I didn't like in here are the three pin voltage controlled fans. Exchange them for basically anything that you have on your own fan page and you are all set. But solely the fact that you already got three pre-installed free fans is a huge positive aspect. Not many cases have that and it immediately sets you up and in case you don't want or you forgot case fans you can just slam everything in and it will work and it will not come off throttle. They are okay for them being free. And they are not too loud, I tested them. But ignoring that little thing, for the people who are looking for a mid-range build, the case is pretty much a perfect fit. Nothing to choke the fans, nothing that wiggles, and compatibility-wise, we are all up there. So an absolute recommendation from our side. And I would even go as far as to say that I believe the Sky One Lite is the better option, though I believe the cable thing is just beautiful. But the bang for the buck? in here is just so much better. With all of that said, giveaway. Now because of the fact that I don't believe to make a giveaway across three or four different platforms is a good thing, the whole giveaway will take place over on our Instagram. There you will find an image which will also be linked in the description below. Like the image, follow the page, follow Montag's page and comment underneath that picture which color you would like to have. At exactly this date, we will draw the winner by using the first random comment picker website I can find on Google. We will check if you have done everything I just said and then we will contact you. Everybody can participate, we don't discriminate against continents, everybody is welcome and I will even ship it via Pigeon if I really have. If the date has already passed, I'm truly sorry, but uh, next time watch the video a bit earlier. On that negative note, I wish everybody good luck and uh, please choose the black one because uh, I I am keeping one of them and I really hope that I will be keeping the white one because I really like the white one so please go with black. But okay, this should be it for the Montag Sky 1. At this point a huge thank you to Montag for sending them over and also a huge thank you to them for the opportunity to have this global giveaway. If you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the original Montag Sky 1 if you haven't watched it till now. If you're looking for a beautiful cable hider but you can't forget what NZXC has put people through, that's a good place to start. On a side note, we now also have channel memberships so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to buy a pigeon. Cause I do remember the hassle that the last few abroad giveaways put me through and a pigeon can save me a ton of export commissions, so uh, I'm buying a pigeon. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.